All right, our Lord Jesus bless you. I'm gonna read a couple of verses to you and then we're gonna talk about them for just a little bit. Uh, just what God put on my heart today. It says, uh, John 17, we're gonna start uh, verse 13. It says, and now, I, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in, themse in themselves. I have given them thy word, and in thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. And thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. And the next verse talks about that for our sakes, he sanctified himself. So here's what here's what keeps keeps coming to my mind. Okay? Any any time those verses come to mind, here's what just keeps coming to me. As Christians, we have an option, okay? We have an option more than we realize for the actions that we do. Now a lot of times, let's be honest, a lot of times we're like Peter. We want to rush in. We want to take care of the situation. Most times we mess things up. Most times we're the ones that pull out that little sword and we're trying to take care of the problem. And what we've done is we've taken our lives in our own hands. And we, if it wasn't for Jesus, we got ourselves in a big mess. You know, Jesus hadn't have picked up that soldier's ear and, and, and healed him, then Peter very well could have lost his life and Peter would have never had the opportunity to witness about the Lord Jesus to anybody. Jesus told Peter, he said, the devil has wanted you and wanted to sift you sweet, but I've prayed for you. You look at the life of Paul. Paul was also a get up and go person. But you look at the life of Paul, he turns around and he says that, that because of his infirmities that he's learned to trust in God. Because of his infirmities, through his infirmities, he started praising God. You look at Paul, he spent a lot of time in prison. Let's be honest, Paul probably would have been running past a lot of people that he had a chance to witness to, but because he was in prison, he witnessed to the people around him. If not, he would have just been going on to the next town. Meaning that God used the situation that he was in and allowed the things that happened. You, you look at you look at the life of, of Peter also. Uh, he got locked up one time and they were praying for him. And angel came Unlock the door, said, hey, come this way, go that way, and go out the door. Even Peter himself thought that maybe he was seeing things until he realized he wasn't in a dream. He realized this stuff was really happening. What's all this do? Look, guys, it's this is what God's been teaching me more and more. Instead of a lot of times trying to get out of the situation, and, and this is very personal with me. God, God has given this to me personally, but uh, he's also pressed on my heart that just like the apostle said, things that happened to me are for your benefit. Why? Because I would have never thought to share this, and I want you to know this, unless the Lord Jesus Christ hadn't showed it to me first. I would have never thought to encourage others through the same situations if it hadn't happened to me. Instead of trying to get out of the situation that you're in, instead of trying to avoid the circumstances around you, instead look for the people that you're supposed to witness to during the whatever you're going through. There's a reason why you're there. Jesus kept saying, look, the world hates them because they love me, because, because they're with me. You got to understand in this world, so many times what we're trying to do is get everybody to like us. Sometimes we're trying to do, and look, I was guilty of this for many years. And, and, and still today, 
after saying that still today i catch myself in the middle of it wanting to be part of the group wanting to be i, I want to be liked among those that are around me but but you got to ask yourself what's the reason that they're liking me are they liking me because i stand for love for forgiveness for the truth of god's word do, do they like me because uh I stand for um, we should abstain from sin. I stand for because I, I, I'm an example of what we should be or shouldn't be. I, am, are they liking me because I'm Christ-like? Or are they liking me because I do the same things they do? Because we all have a party together. You see, there's a big difference. And, and a lot of times we have Christians on the other side that they're like, man, Nobody get along with me. Nobody really comes over and hangs out with me. Nobody nobody wants to go out and hang out with me when I do things. But here's the issue. You got to ask yourself sometimes, why is that? Is it because of the way you are or is it because of what you stand for? It, it, it's going to happen. Um, you look at Paul and his life. And, and I know I kind of jump around in stories and stuff, but just what comes to mind as I'm sharing you look at Paul, he kept trying his best to go back to the people in the temples and explain to them, hey, this is Jesus, and this was Jesus in this verse, and this was Jesus in that verse, and this is Jesus in this other verse, and, and they didn't want to hear it. The Jewish people didn't want to hear it. Not all of them anyways. There was some that probably did, but for the majority, they didn't want to hear it. Paul finally one day comes to the realization, you know what, I'm going to grab my coat, and I'm going to go to the Gentiles because the Gentiles keep asking me to come talk to them. So obviously that's a door that God's opened. And this is the door that God's shut. So I'm going to quit beating this wall and I'm going to go this way. There's so much in our lives that we're doing that with. There's so much in this walk with the Lord Jesus Christ that we're doing that with. That Look, I'm just a little man in this world. I'm not going to spend my time, and, and I know everybody has their, their freedom of whatever they want to believe. I'm not going to spend my time discussing the politicians, discussing the, the world decisions, discussing all this stuff that, that I can't control. But what can I control? Well, I can control a little bit, and it's hard enough, I can control a little bit of my responsibilities at work. I can control a little bit of my responsibilities at home with my family as the leader of the house. I can control a little bit in my own life. And if I'm honest with you, that's my hardest struggle. Why? Because I have no excuses. I know better. I know better than 90% of the things that I catch myself doing. I know better. I know the scriptures. I know what God feels about it. I know what he says about it. And those things are the things that I'm supposed to be working against. Those things probably need more my priority than a lot of things that we've got our minds wrapped up in. The reason this is coming to mind is because he, he keeps talking about that he has, he sanctified himself for our sakes. You're right. I'm not saved by my works. But, but Paul also said that, hey, you can't have faith without works. In other words, you have to show what you believe in. You can't just talk about it. It's real easy for a preacher to open his mouth and talk about everything everybody's supposed to be doing. Simplest thing in the world to do. All you do is you pick up your Bible and you pretty much read it. And every time you see something that you know somebody else is doing, that they're doing wrong, just talk about it. That's great. But the hardest thing is to physically do yourself what you're talking about. It's a tough thing to do. Sure, you can pick out probably five things out of a hundred that you do great and talk about them all day long. But in the long run, you've deceived yourself. Why? Because 95 of them, you're running wide open to it. And God sees it, and you're the only one that's blinded yourself. Jesus prayed for us to abstain from evil. Jesus prayed for us that God wouldn't take us out of this world. And a lot of times, that's what we're trying to do. A lot of times, what we're trying to do is we're trying to 
get away from the issue that we're in. We're trying to get out of the circumstance that we are. And, I, and I'm not telling you to stop praying for that. All I'm trying to tell you to do is, and this is just what I feel in, in Christ, because this is the lesson that I'm getting. Start looking for, okay, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but who am I supposed to share with while I'm here? What am I supposed to be learning while I'm here? Is, is there one more soul that I'm supposed to share with here? Because, or is there another one coming tomorrow? Look, I'll just be honest with you. There, there's so many times that that's happened in my life that I thought, well, I've already talked to everybody here. And the next thing you know, somebody new comes in and start talking for a little bit. And then I realized, wow, if I'd have been taken out before, I'd have never had a chance to talk to that person. Or, or a lot of times, I mean, let's, a lot of times that's real easy for it to say, but let me go even further. A lot of times it's like, wow, if you'd have took me out earlier, that person would have been ever been able to witness to me. That person would have never been able to tell me their testimony. That person would have never gave me that one little piece that I was missing to complete this other thing. See, there's such a bigger picture to it. Sometimes we think that we're in a situation just so that we can be used by God to somebody else. But sometimes you're in a situation so that somebody else has somebody they can witness to. Because let's, let's just be honest, okay? Uh, in our world that we're in right now, I, I'm just I'm just going to tell you the truth. We like to go to church and we like to talk about God. That's great. That's, that's a wonderful blessing from above. To have those fellow brothers and sisters, wonderful times to sit in Sunday school and talk about Jesus wonderful time to sit in, in church and listen to man stand up and, and tell us the word of God. Listen to beautiful singing. That's, that's a great blessing and a picture of what heaven's going to be like for us. Awesome. You know what we're not very good at? You know what's lacking in our world? People who want to talk about Jesus the other 20, the other 20 hours out of the day. Because on Sunday we spend two hours at church maybe we spend four hours at church if we go back Sunday night. And then on Wednesday, we spend two hours at church. So on Wednesdays, what do we do with the other 22 hours? On Sundays, what do we do with the other 20 hours? What happens? You see, when you start breaking it down and you start realizing... A lot of people don't really talk a whole lot about Jesus. Look, I run into people all the time that, it, that, that, that it's almost like you've bored them when you start asking questions about Jesus. I mean, it, it's, it's when you, hey, I've learned this and I saw this, it's almost like they're falling asleep. When you start looking into the, the Hebrew words and you really learn something that's deep, they just look at you like, eh, I've heard this before. It's sad, but it's the truth. I've had people standing right in church after the service. I oh, man, I found this, I found this. And you can tell like you're interrupting their night. And it's like, wow. And it's very easy as a Christian to get discouraged. Why? Because that's just how this world is. This world is so focused on so many things that are pointless. It's unreal. And as Christians, we're not above it. You can, uh, years ago, I used, I used to love fishing, man. I, I tell you what, I could, I had spent so much time obsessed with fishing. Not saying there's nothing wrong with fishing, but I was so obsessed with bass fishing, especially that, uh, my wife, I would sit there when I would get at home and I would get on the computer and I would look at Cabela's and I would look at Bass Pro Shops and I would look at all these places that sold all these lures. I wasn't buying any, but boy, I'd spend hours and hours looking through all these things. I could just about have told you how much each lure was, what each lure was used for. I would watch all these fishing shows and all these different things. And, 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 and then it grew even more because I wanted to always be going. I wanted to always be on the lake. I was always, we were always going here, going there. I'd get home from work, grab my stuff, and out the door we'd go. And uh, my wife, 
she used to, she used to love going fishing. Well, back when uh, back before even we started dating, she used to love going fishing. Her and a friend of hers, they would go down the creek and they they would just love fishing. And then one day, uh, me and her started having a conversation, and, and I just told her, I said, "How come you don't ever go fishing with me?" And she's like, "Honey, I'll just be honest with you." She's like, "It's all you ever talk about. It's all you ever do." Every time I turn around, you're on the computer. She said, you, you, you've just about drove me crazy with fishing. You've said it so much. You've talked about it so much that I don't really care for it anymore. She's like, I'd like to hear about something else other than fishing. Well, at the time, it kind of aggravated me. Why? Because that's something that I like. But then as I started getting older, and it took quite a few years for it to sink in, I started realizing that's what we do, isn't it? When, when the Lord started opening up to me the Word of God, it was amazing how that transitioned in my life. Why? Because I sat down and I started reading my Bible, started going to the church services, I started getting online, I started looking at different videos and listening to different preachers, I started getting on Google and really getting in depth and different things about the Word, and then I realized, wow, this is what we do in our lives. This is what we do. We really go after what we want to learn. We really go after what we want to be a part of. And the, and don't get me wrong, the people who liked fishing, the people who enjoyed fishing, guess what? They they enjoyed being around me. They enjoyed, hey, you want to go with us? Hey, you want to go to this? Why? Because I did what they did. Because I was, I was also part of what they did. I knew different tricks. Hey, I don't know what to do now. Where do you think is a good spot? Well, I think it's a good spot there because they bought it this time, this time. This is the bait we should use. Guess what happened? The same thing happened when I started getting around Jesus and his holy word is people started to get attracted to you that wanted to spend time with you that, that were studying the word. But here's something. Not everybody, let's just be honest, not everybody is as passionate about being around Jesus and the word of God that you might think. But just not. It's not that, it's not that they don't love Jesus. It's not that they don't want to learn the Word of God. It, it's simply this. Some want to learn more. Some don't. Some have a purpose, a calling from God. Some don't. Some, all they want to do is just talk about Him for six hours a week, and then they're done. And that's their choice. But I'm going to tell you something. When you really start following Jesus and you really start doing what He tells you to do, don't be surprised when these words that he just said that the world hates them because you're with him. Because you start to stand for what he says. You, little by little, it's going to separate you from people. Why? Because there's not a lot of people that want to be that close to God. There's not a lot of people that want to truly sit down. Hey, I'd like to come over to your house and I'd like to sit down and study once a week. Hey, I'd, I'd like to, can me and you go online and let's learn the Word of God together? There's not a lot of people that want to do that. Sure, there's a lot of people that want to show up Sunday morning and say, hey, I want to sit around and I want to listen to what we have to say, and then we're done for the week. But there's not a lot of people that really want to talk about Jesus at a nonstop. That, that, that that's what their obsession is. There's just not. Why am I saying all this? Because... Whether we realize it or not, Jesus said, we're not of this world. Things of this world, we enjoy. Things of this world are, are fun to do. There's a lot of good things in this world that, that, that God has given us talents to do. I mean, I'll I just be honest with you. A lot of times, and this is just something that's been on my mind here lately quite a bit. Um, it talks about in the Bible that we're supposed to what God's looking for is people that worship Him in spirit and truth. The word we always use is worship, and the way we describe it is music. We automatically describe it as music. We automatically describe it as somebody standing singing a song and us all singing together. That's what we consider worship. I'm going to be honest with you here. In the last month or so, you know what's been more precious to me than a man-written song? listening to the Word of God just over my car stereo while I'm going to work. Sitting down with a pocket knife and a piece of wood outside carving 
and listening to my phone read the word of God to me. Sitting down or when I'm mowing the yard, taking and plugging in headphones into my phone and listening to the word of God in my ear read to me while, while I'm working. That to me has become more of a music in my ear than the actual singing of people. And you say, well, I don't understand. You know, I didn't really either at first, but then I realized that when he says spirit and truth, there is no greater truth than God's word. And when God's word is teaching you, it's his Holy Spirit teaching you. So at that moment, you're actually worshiping more than you realize. Why? Because you're listening, you're wanting to know the truth of God's word through the revealing of the Holy Spirit that only you can get through Jesus' blood in your life. That there is no, there is no better worship of God. There is no better time spent with God than that right there. Yes, look, it's wonderful to listen to people singing songs, but you also got to remember that even though those songs are wonderful and they're a blessing and they're talking about it, how many times are those songs not based on the Word of God? Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they just repeat the sentence over and over. Sometimes they actually have the Word of God written into the song. I think sometimes we overcomplicate. I think sometimes we have steered to the left or the right just a little bit to realize that, look, praising God through spirit and truth is sitting time listening to the Word of God read to us or even us reading it aloud and studying the Word of God. We've replaced, so many people are in danger because they've replaced worshiping with God or worshiping to God and, and just listening around and listening to other people sing and think, oh wow, that was great and it was wonderful. And don't get me wrong, that's a huge blessing. But you've forgotten the true word and the true spirit, how it feels. It feels when that word connects with me, because look, when I listen to somebody sing a song, does that song help convict me? Does it help correct me? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let me tell you what always does, the Word of God does. The Word of God always either encourages me, corrects me, or, 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 or teaches me something to share with somebody else. Always. Every time I listen to it, every time I sit and read it, it has something for the spirit inside, the spirit mad that I'm trying to feed. A lot of times what we're doing is we're feeding it a little bit of the truth, but we're also putting all this other stuff in it. We're, we're, we're focused on the tune, and don't get me wrong, a lot of times that's what it takes to get us back on track. But this is just something that's been on my life so much here lately. Why? Because a lot of times we, we, we've just overlooked the simplicity of what Jesus was talking about. A lot of times, I hear people talk about this a lot, you know, oh my goodness, every day I get on and I listen to, you know, I've got it playing in the background and I've got this going on and they mentioned all these great singers and I'm thinking, you know, that's, that's good. But let me give you some advice. Why don't you sit around some time and have Matthew, the book of Matthew playing in the background. Let me give you some better advice. How about sometimes have the book of Proverbs playing in the background? Better yet, look, listen to the book of John. Listen to the book of Revelation in the background. Why? Because, buddy, if you talk about soaking something up, it's good for you. It, it can, it'll really change your life. It, 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 it'll give you a peace, but it'll also correct you. It'll edify you, but it'll also slice just a little bit and think, ow, man, boy, I've been doing that. I need to quit that. We're not of this world. Quit trying to change this world. A lot of times that's what we're doing. A lot of times we're so focused in changing the brother to the left, the brother to the right. We're, 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 we're trying to change the neighbor we're, we're trying to change this one's way of thinking. All they, you know, when in fact is what we should be doing is listening to the word of God and doing what Jesus told us to do. 
What we really ought to be doing is praying for the Holy Spirit to change the rest of us. Because let's be honest, a lot of times we can't change ourselves. <laughs> we can't change our mouth. We can't keep our mouth closed like it should be. We, we, we cut people down and then we think, man, why did I say that? But then we think somehow that we can change the person in front of us. Can't even change ourselves. I thank God every now and then for that Holy Spirit that, that, that it prays for me because I don't even know what I'm praying for half the time. Half the time I think I know what's best for me and the truth is it's not. Half the time I've, I've prayed, Lord, I'm ready to move on to the next place and the truth is that during all this mess, the place that he put me was probably the best thing for me. He kept me through the whole time. He kept me. Why? Because he knows what's best for me. Jesus didn't ask for God to take us out of here. Jesus asked for, hey, keep them through it. Keep them through it. Keep them on focus. Keep them tasked. That's what I've done with these guys. God, I've done my part. I've kept these guys on task while I've been here. You realize right after he prayed this prayer in John 17 is when Peter steps out and takes his dagger out and he gets ready to, and he cuts that man's ear off. Right as soon as he prays the prayer and says, Lord, I've kept them. One of them steps out. Friends, we, 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 I know I've got a lot to learn. We all have a lot to learn. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said he sanctified himself for our sakes. Jesus didn't separate himself from the people. Jesus separated himself from the sin. That's what we don't understand. He wasn't trying to tell us that we needed to separate ourselves from people. Now, I know some people are, are they're set in their ways and, and, and they don't want to turn from sin. And I'm not saying go hang out with them and go be a part of them. But, but you can't separate yourself from people because people are the ones we're supposed to be witnessing to. That's what the devil wants. The devil wants us to be far away from anybody that we can talk to about God because he don't want us witnessing to anybody. I started witnessing to a man one day and he came up to me and you could tell he was having an issue and right there in the middle of everybody, I started talking to him and witnessing to him, telling him about Jesus, telling him what a blessing Jesus was to me tell him that I could tell he was upset and I just started sharing Jesus with him and next thing you know that man he turned around and, and I could tell that he was he was dealing with some probably some drugs or something but all of a sudden he he turned around he looked at me and his face turned white as ghost and he said I gotta go and I was like what's the matter why you gotta go and he said I gotta go I gotta get out of here I said I gotta I gotta leave and I was like you don't have to leave he said yeah I do too he said I gotta get away he he went out the door the person came over to me and said wow that person came up with this attitude, that attitude, and he said, you just all of a sudden, you just started sharing love. You started telling them about Jesus, started witnessing to them, trying to explain to them. They said something in that person drug that person away, didn't they? And I was like, yep, that's exactly what happened. We're not of this world. We're supposed to be here to try to help. We're supposed to be here to try to point people to Jesus. But more than anything, Jesus said, stay away from evil. Keep from sin. Keep Try your best, push away confess your sins and you get into a mess keep share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because that's really the only help this world's going to give anyway this is just what was on my heart is that Jesus if if it made sense to you then praise the Lord Jesus Christ if uh if, if there's only one thing you get all all this it's I need to be following Jesus I don't need to be worried about trying to fix this world I need to be following the man that he died for the world. His name is Jesus Christ. His blood is the only thing that can help us. Pray for me. Pray the Lord Jesus bless you all. Y'all have a good day.